When it comes to security, how much is too much? We're hearing a lot at the moment about the cure not being worse than the actual virus. And that's, although being used disingenuously around the world because of the coronavirus, it does ring true very much so for the security industry. The reason I say that is when there is too much security, it can actually inhibit the business and inhibit its ability to be able to do things, its ability to change, to be agile and to produce more stuff. This is not good. Too much security is a bad thing. When you're implementing any kind of security policy or procedures, you should be looking first at the company's business, the company's own policies, the company's own goals. In this way, you can align your security posture to that of the business. The business will have to take risks. They will have to accept risks that you might deem to be unacceptable or need to be mitigated further or transferred to someone else or even avoided. But stopping doing certain business activities is not the best way of doing business at times. So make sure that any time you're putting security into your business, that you're not doing it in a way that is actually going to stop it from working. A great example of this at the moment is the current working from home strategy employed by many, many companies. In most cases, a lot of the security provisions had to be scaled back in order to allow the volume of people to work from home and access through VPNs, etc. If security had held their ground in these instances, many of these companies would have struggled for that first two to three weeks, a critical time when changing the cadence of how you're going to work. So there are times when loosening that security stance is important. And there are also times when applying the biggest, the best, the strongest, the fastest is not in the interests of the business.